in the illest up in the business. I'm hoping to make a killing. Get at me, get at me, going coast to coast, going coast to coast. We going coast to coast, coast. To and we welcome you into the inaugural episode of the Coast to Coast podcast. I'm Chris Johnson, and I'm joined by Eric Cruikshank, Grant Stuve, Joey Caprio, three of the leaders, quote unquote leaders, on this Illini hockey team who's done very well this season. 15, 6, and 1 in the 2017 18 campaign. First of all, guys, welcome to the show. And how are you guys doing on this Friday? The game coming up against the very formidable Jamestown Jimmies, a team that you guys have never faced before, and a team that actually has only been involved for the past two seasons as a program. Uh, thanks for having us on here, Cristiano. You know, we're excited to be a part of this. Uh, you know, hopefully we can make this into something big. But, yeah, we're excited. You know, it's game day. Can't, can't, be, can't, get, uh, can't get any more excited than game day down here in the Big Pond in Champaign. Uh, a lot of guys do their own routines. Right now we're, we're hanging out. We're, we're going to go for a walk soon, get our, little, get our legs going, get a pregame meal, and go from there. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, going off what Cap said. Um, obviously we don't know much about these guys, but, um, we know they're going to be good. So it's just like any other, uh, any other CSCHL weekend, we got to be ready to, uh, obviously bring the pace and, uh, play our game. And I think everything will be all right. Yeah. Thanks for having us, Cristiano. Grant Stuve here. Uh, I actually got my morning walk out of the way, so I don't really need to go with you guys again, but well, you took, you took it upon yourself. I took it upon myself, got a little Duncan, a couple wake up wraps and, uh, yeah, I'm ready to go tonight. It's going to be fun. Ready to play with Eric again. And uh, I'm looking forward to the game. And uh, 7 o'clock can't come soon enough. So branching off of that, guys, pregame rituals. What's the weirdest superstition you've seen? I know it's just the ACHA, but there's got to be some weird ones on the bench and in the locker room before games. What's the weirdest one that stuck out to you, Cap? Uh, I'm trying to think here. I mean, well, we, we can go. We can talk about ours. Ours isn't too weird, but we what we like to do, uh, it's called Coffee Club. We started it last year. Um, good friend of ours, uh, Aaron Dusek, uh, good alumni, uh, started his coffee club. And uh, what we like to do, um, our old assistant coach, Tommy O'Brien, um, me, uh, Grant Stuve, Eric Cruikshank, um, James McGing, and uh, Andy Wicklin, and uh, David Kellner, we like, to, you know, we like to get our minds right. We get to uh, sit up there. Uh, I drink water. I'm not a big coffee guy, but a couple guys drink coffee. A couple guys have a Snickers bar or something. Uh, and we, we play trivia. Um, you know, Friday nights are usually about the team we're playing, you know, about their school. Uh, Saturday nights is open, open to uh, the trivia master. And Eric uh, won last year. You know, beat me out by uh, the last weekend. I was leading all the way. Pretty butthurt about it. But uh, Eric, got the, Eric got the torch passed down from Aaron. But I, I like that tradition. You know, it gets us ready. We don't like to, you know, go down the locker room and sit down there, especially it's really hot down there. So we like to do that. Uh, what about you guys? You guys got anything? Yeah, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about my game day tradition or the lack of tradition because uh, every day is different. But uh, I typically I try to wake up around, I don't know, 1030, but that turns into noon. <laughs> if I have class, which, you know, last semester of senior year, obviously not going to schedule. Well, how many class. classes do you have? I have three this semester. Uh, three in class, one online. Okay. But uh, that's a pretty easy one. Just, you know, log in every now and then. No, it's not. But uh, And then, you know, it's probably around 1 o'clock. I think about what I'm going to eat, if I want to get up and move or – put some together in the fridge and I just actually bought the whole Walmart store too <laughs> so I'm gonna be eating good for a couple days now but uh and then it comes around three o'clock and that's typically when Tyler Opilka and myself go get our pregame meal at Witch Witch uh Witch 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 yeah we've had a what's couple, that that's that's a bananas move to me well we've had a couple of places but my favorite thing is you get to pick whatever Sammy you want and customize it and so I get a little creative I'm there. surprised it's still open I am too, but uh, we love the place to death. I'm never going to go against it, and uh, then it comes. What time do we have to be at the ring? Five, right? I believe it's five, so I'll get there around 4.45, 5, you know, right on time, and then it just becomes, what does Stu want to do today? <laughs> I'll walk in, get out of my suit that I'm wearing for a couple of minutes. Still don't know why we wear those to the games, and uh, you know, I look at the stick. If it needs tape, then I'll tape it, but if not... <laughs> I'll throw my backup twig in the uh, 
not your starting twig spot. And I'll go up, sit around, watch the youth kids not skate very well. And then uh, go stretch with Jim, Jimmy and I. We don't really stretch. We just kind of walk around and observe. We'll motivate. A couple high fives here, a couple high fives there. And then uh, it comes game time. Get on the ice. I like to warm up for about nine or ten minutes out of the whole 15. I don't want to get too tired before the game starts. And then uh, that's pretty much it. It's game time, and we got to play. I think we're playing the Jimmies tonight. The Jimmies. Jamestown Jimmies. And the funny part about that is before I go to Crookshank's rituals, the reason why they're called the Jimmies is not for any legitimate reason. The guy who was at the school, there's actually not an actual theory that solidifies why they're called this, but Jamestown, I guess Jimmy, because it's a nickname for James and the other way around, that's why they're called the Jimmies. And their logo is a horse. With a with a knight riding it. Wow, I did not know that. They so get very curveball. creative at yeah. Jamestown. Where is Jamestown? North Dakota. I thought it was on fifteen the East Coast. hour bus ride. Apparently they're uh, trucking in here. Oh, they're not going. To, what was that? Is that like Jamestown? That was one of the original OG uh, yeah, that's true. Con- colonies, right? That's the, uh, I took a history Plymouth class Rock before. I wanted to be a history teacher for oh, a semester. And then what happened? Yeah, the Grant Stuve show. It's not the Coast to Coast podcast. It's Stuve sorry, Weekly. sorry, fans. So I uh, came in the university and I had some very poor guidance, guidance yeah. from my cousin Austin Zima, who was a former member of the hockey team, and he was a history major. He says, Grant, you know, be a history major and get your secondary education you'll be a teacher and that lasted a semester when I took those two history classes and uh, they're both C's <laughs> but C's get degrees Eric what's your tradition uh, 20 goals in uh, two consecutive seasons can't happen by accident um I don't really like to think of it as any sort of superstition or any traditions kind of like what Stu said just kind of like to take the day light, not think too much about the game. I think if you think about the game too much, you can get your own head. And so I like to just kind of keep it light, like Cap said, get my legs moving, get on a little walk, um, get to the rink, obviously tape my stick. I'm um, not like Grant where I just don't tape my stick if I don't feel like cause I'm lazy. Um, so I like to get a fresh tape job. And then like Cap said, get up to coffee club. It's a good time to just kind of relax and not think too much about the game and then um have a couple laughs with the boys do like to likes to make the boys laugh every once in a while so um other than that i don't put on my skates any certain way um don't get dressed i think i get dressed the same way every time um and then warm-up wise i do have a couple things i like to do i like to try and handle pucks as much as i can get my hands moving um whether that be like fumbling um working on catching passes in your feet stuff like that just try and get yourself um going for that game and then other than that um, just get a lot of touches. I think getting the legs moving, getting your, getting a lot of touches is the most important part. I think the definitely the most important part about getting ready for the game is actually getting on the ice and warming up. Um, the off ice one is just a loosen up thing, but um, a lot of guys just kind of do their own thing anyways. So um, just like a camaraderie kind of thing. Uh, yeah, going back to it, um, I don't know if any of you guys have watched us warm up, uh, particularly me. I don't really do much. Uh, I kind of stretch by the red line, uh, do a couple of passes with Pilks, uh, shoot a couple of times. Other than that, go back and stretch, watch the other team, see how they're doing, um, and go from there. But going back on Cristiano's original uh, question here, a, a weird pregame ritual. Um, our coach likes to you know, say that we don't prepare sometimes. And he used to say what he used to do for Nick Fabrini, yeah, our coach, clarifying. Nick Fabrini. Yeah, uh, what he used to do. Um, for before games, you know, and obviously, I don't know if you ever talked to the guy, but he can't go out without mentioning how his team went 38 and no. Uh, but what he used to do, he said, you know, he likes to claim himself as a goal scorer. I beg to differ. Uh, he used to take his stick with his Michael Jordan uh, shirt and sit up in the stands and visualize himself scoring goals. And uh, he said it used to help him get the hands ready, you know, and get him ready to score some goals out there. Um, that's kind of a weird tradition, weird, uh, weird ritual that I think uh, not too many people do it nowadays. But we'll see. I haven't seen too many people do it, but I thought you guys would let, enjoy that. And for the guys that do practice rituals, if something isn't working, do you switch it up? If you haven't scored a goal in a couple games, you're squeezing your stick a little bit. Is there something that you move radically toward? Uh, I try not to, um, but obviously when there's something's not working, you got to ma- sometimes make changes to help that um, get going again. So actually recently I uh, 
changed up the knob on my on my tape and I uh, went back to my original freshman cage I wore so um, next game I did that I scored a goal so um, I don't know if it's maybe like a mental thing I don't know how the human body works exactly but I think potentially those type of changes can make uh, make a difference and uh, my boy uh, Grant Stuve life is good positive lifestyle the art of optimism uh, fed me a nice pass and I uh, did what we've always done and buried it just like the Chicago Steel Camp Chicago Steel Camp I like how you tease that so let's go into our next topic here origin stories how did you guys get into hockey so Grant we'll start with you how did you get into hockey first off and did this always seem to be your outlet and source for uh, escape if you will Started when I was two years old. I, my dad forced skates on my feet, and when I, yeah, and when I was on the ice, apparently I would cry and skate to my mom the whole time. Mama's boy. And then three years old came around, and I just turned around and started to love the game, and kept playing until my in the high school freshman year. I had a little debate whether to keep playing baseball or keep playing hockey because it was only pick one. And I picked hockey, and I don't know if I regret it or not, <laughs> because uh, it hurts. <laughs> the body's taking a, a lot of heartbreak in the sport, but uh, I've met some great guys, and uh, I definitely think I made the right choice. First off, before you hand off the mic to Joey Caprio, favorite team to watch, favorite hockey memory? Go. Favorite team to watch. So are you a Blackhawks fan? Come on. I am a Blackhawks okay. fan. But so we'll have some problems. They're not my forward. favorite team to watch, though. You like the Vegas Knights? Come on. You know, I don't really have a favorite team. I don't really favorite watch too much then. hockey because back in my junior days, I was in the stands a lot watching enough hockey. <laughs> and uh, it gets tiring after a while. So you got burnt out. But I would say if I have to choose loyalty, it'll be a Blackhawks. Uh, you know, I get to party with a player on the team's dad quite frequently. <laughs> and so it's just nice Happy to – yeah, I'm not going to name any Confidentiality. names. <laughs> but, yeah, so – so favorite hockey memory, either favorite you playing or watching from the stands? It's got to be around my sophomore year in high school. I went to a tryout camp called Chicago Steel and was paired up with this player, Eric Cruikshank. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. And uh, we kind of butted heads at first a little bit, and then he realized that I'm the best player he's ever going to play with, and so he had to start being nice to me. And from then on, we've kind of had this good bond together. So from Grant Stuve to Joey Caprio, number five in your program, number one in your hearts. Yeah, just like Grant, uh, I started when I was young, started when I was two. My dad played hockey. Uh, he apparently, from what I hear, he's pretty good. I don't know. I can't really tell. Can't really see it. Not in the best shape anymore, so I can't see him skating. But when he, I mean, he used to coach me. He taught me a lot about the game. Uh, and, yeah, when I was two, he would put me out there. He would do a lot with me. He would, you know, take me out to learn to skate all the time. And he always wanted to have me work on my edges, and I didn't want to do that at all. Um, I kind of regret it now because you kind of use your edges a lot. But, I, I mean, you know, he taught me a lot, and that's where I started. Um, he actually coached me um, quite a while, quite quite a bit uh, from when I started playing mites uh, down at uh, down at Darien for, for the Huskies. Um and then all the way through, even when I went to the mission, he was assistant coach with uh, Peter Lappin, who played in the NHL, and his brother Chris. Um, all the way through, I want to say Pee-wee, Pee-wee minor year, they, they were the coaches. Um, funny story, uh, you know, back when I was mites, you know, uh, I was, I'm not going to say, I, I was playing forward back in the day. Um, so there's only, we only had two, two lines, one center. But uh, we played a game. Uh, I didn't play very well, and I knew it, and Dad didn't say anything to me in the locker room, but before I could even get undressed, I ran out to the lobby and uh, tad- told my mom that Dad was yelling at me in the locker room in front of everyone, and uh, she wasn't too happy with that, so he got a nice little scolding, and he's like, I didn't say anything, and she's like, she, she, you know, she was calling him out, cussing him in the lobby. She's like, why are you making him cry? He's only uh, whatever, and he's like, I didn't say anything, but you know, that's just a uh, you know father son relationship right there. But yeah, I was, I was, uh, I played baseball um, all throughout high school too, till my junior senior year. Um, I was, you know, I was on varsity. Uh, you know, we had good times there. They won a state championship in the summer. 
But other than that, I mean, I went and played juniors. The body hurts, let me tell you. A couple more games here. We're going to get through it. Um, block. Last year kind of took a toll on me. I was in a walking boot a lot. You know, block. used my body more than you know, I would have liked to block a couple shots. Um, I think I had the best save percentage on the team at 1,000. Joel and didn't make too many saves last year. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I mean, that's where I am today. But I, I don't think I would change it. You know, I've met a lot of guys. The guys are going to be with me. You know, I'm going to be with around them and hang out with them for the rest of my life so so baseball was your second love yeah baseball was the only other sport I played actually I, I do play golf I dabble in it um uh you know I I shoot a you know I'm not gonna say I shoot a solid game I shoot a you know mid 80s yeah 69 in the front you know 100 on the back something like that but other than that I mean you know I I, I can hit the ball as you can just, yeah, you can it strike always, it. It doesn't, it doesn't always go straight. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't always go straight. I'm usually in the trees, but whatever. And you guys have the annual golf outing in the spring? Yeah, we usually do. You know, we usually do a – we try to do a tournament with the guys. Uh, a lot of guys that golf on the team, but uh, we try and pair them up. I'm, funny story, actually. Joe, uh, Joel and want to do a – what was it? The U.S. Open? What do you want to do? You want to do a Ryder Cup. Um, and it was one of the only weekends that we could do this, uh, one of the only one days – and we were going to play like a tournament, and uh, it was me and Joel, and we were on a team, and uh, our assistant coach, Tommy O'Brien, and uh, our equipment manager, Tommy Watkins. What? Watson. Tommy Watson. Sorry. Tommy Watkins Ta- getting uh, traded to the Rams. But uh, anyways, Joel's like, let's do it. Mid, mid-round mid starts hailing, and as our assistant coach, Tommy O'Brien's teeing off on the second hole, he gets – pelted in the eye with a uh, you know a, a golf, stone a, you know yeah it's stone a golf salt golf ball size hail and continues to swing hits the ball goes directly sideways maybe a couple of yards backwards and uh after that we called it <laughs> <laughs> after that we called if you guys it. ever want to lose i mean you're talking to a conference winning golfer in high school so oh, I mean, oh, oh. no big deal or anything just a little humble brag well, on but, the women's tees or what oh wow not from the ladies come on uh, you know, mid 70s, 80s, no big deal or anything. So, Eric Cruikshank, off to you. So, first, Burlington, Ontario native, but you have a lot of Chicago ties here. Yeah, uh, I get a lot of crap for it because guys say I'm not <clears throat> really Canadian because I didn't really live there. I was just born there. Uh, my dad's job moved us down here right around when I was about to be born. Um, and so, my parents wanted to stay up in Canada to have me because they, they were more familiar with the the healthcare and how that stuff works um, up there. So they had me there. Uh, my brother was born three years before, so he has a little bit more Canadian ties, <clears throat> even though he's not a hockey player. Um, but yeah, so we moved down here to Chicago when I was pretty much a baby. Um, still a Canadian citizen, American resident, so I got my green card. Not a big deal. Um, and <clears throat> uh, yeah, just kind of very similar to what Grant said. I started playing at a young age, and I actually hated it. Um, cried a lot, feet hurt, um, your standard, um, child just complaining about everything they possibly can. And I took actually, I want to say it was a year, but probably more like eight months off, um, stopped playing hockey completely, was a big soccer player at an absolute cannon of a leg. Um, so I definitely, uh, definitely utilize that. But, uh, yeah, one day I just kind of said, dad, like, let's do this. Let's try it again. And from there was kind of like the rest is history. And now I'm at the point where I never thought I would be saying like, oh, I'm into my last few games or I have three more home weekends in the big pond or my hockey career is pretty much over. But we're here now. Um, But yeah, never had like like they said, never had a big sport that I really um, kind of said, oh, it's here between this or hockey. It was always just hockey, hockey, hockey. Uh, My dad played growing up and coached me as well, like Cap said. Um, so definitely like a hockey family through and through all my family's from Canada, all love the Leafs, all love Canadian sports, hockey, whatever. Um, and so it's kind of been in my blood forever. My mom's a huge fan, which for a lot of people here, like you don't really learn about hockey until your son plays hockey for most moms, at least where in Canada, it's a religion. Um, but yeah, uh, favorite hockey memory besides, um, Meeting my line mate for life. Uh, probably have to be my. What's that? Well, don't be like that. Um, I don't know. Can we pull up clips here? I got my uh, game winning uh, 
Pee Wee. We can state add it champ- in post. We can add it in post. Okay. After. State championship uh, game winner, triple overtime at actually the Edge Ice Arena. Oh, what Light a rink! Light show and all. What a rink! Um, we were playing the Cyclones. It was Pee Wee Gold. So A, Pee Wee A. You guys never played that low. No, Pee Wee. It was Pee Wee A. Central States is double A. I was dusting it. Let me just tell you, fresh off the house league grind, first year of travel, made the Pee Wee A team, came down triple overtime, threw the defenseman's legs, backhand shed. Winner. I went from backhand shed to the corner, hands up, and all my team was on the other side of the ice, so I had to full sprint all the way down the ice to the goalie, and then we had the big pile up. So, um, yeah, it's on YouTube if you want to check it out. Um, but yeah, that we'll have to uh, get that on there so all the fans can see it. So it's interesting that you guys all sounded like you were thrown onto the ice against your will. Yeah. Will you do that for your own kids in any sport? Will you live like vic- not that your parents were living vicariously through you, but do you want them to be athletes when they grow up? Definitely want them to be athletes. Um, I think like any like most parents would say, if they don't like hockey, I'm not going to force them to play it. Um, I think. I'll definitely push them into playing it a little more than maybe your non-hockey parent would. So cut the umbilical cord with a skate? Exactly. Um, but I think it's one of those things where it's an expensive sport, and if you don't enjoy it and you don't actually like it – like I was – my parents didn't have to tell me to go outside and shoot pucks or go play street hockey with my friends. Like I was doing it, and they were saying, hey, it's time for dinner. I'm like, wait, hold on. we got to win by two. You know what I mean? So um, it wasn't something that they had to force me to do and get better and – um, I've had, uh, been able to grow a good enough friend group at near my, or very close to where I live, um, within the towns, um, who will still like to go play hockey. So when we'll come home from, from breaks and whatnot, we will, uh, we'll head over to the rink that we've skated at since we started and we'll just go play open hockey together as 24 year olds now. And we started doing that at 15 years old. So, um, definitely think my kids are going to at least try it. If they don't like it, they're taking up golf because you can do that forever. Um, what I, I'm a big proponent of letting the kid decide. Uh, obviously, you know, hockey, I love hockey. Uh, it's, it's unlike any, any other sport. Uh, you know, you make some of the, some, some of your best friends, uh, you, you can go to, you can go to not talking to anyone and then see them around the rink or, uh, around at, uh, you know, to restaurant or something. You can talk, talk about the glory days. Um, I don't know how many of those I have, but we're gonna, we can talk about some of them, but, uh, for me, obviously, if he doesn't like it, he doesn't like it. If you know, I'll probably, you know, try and get him out there to skate um, at first. But if he's, you know, if he just doesn't, he's not into it. He's not into it. Um, you know, if he's into, you know, golf or badminton or whatever he's into, um, you know, let him do his thing. You know, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna be better at what he likes than what I'm forcing him to do. Um, especially now how expensive the sport's getting. Uh, I'm kind of glad I'm getting out of it, <laughs> honestly. Um, but, yeah, that's that's what I got. That's what my my thing is. I know a lot of parents like to – I've seen it around these – especially down here at the youth organization where we help out with them. And a lot of kids – a lot of kids don't like it a lot. They uh, they kind of s- spend their whole hour on the ice crying. And when you try and take let them go off the ice, their parents are there yelling at them to get back on the ice. And uh, all you can do is feel feel sorry for the kids. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you just gotta try and make them enjoyable as they can, and hopefully they stop crying. Yeah, that, um, that turned dark pretty quickly. <laughs> it did. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to chalk up the decision-making process to genetics, and uh, I wasn't blessed with the greatest genetics for this sport, and uh, I'm sure history will repeat itself, so my kid will most likely not be. But uh, if he is, I'm going to take a different route. I'm going to go the Russian style, and he's not going to go to school ever. (laughs) He's going to play hockey 24-7, 365, and uh, he's going to make it to the show because I don't want to work when I get older, and if I could piggyback on him the rest of the way, I'm going to do that. Have you ever seen a parent growing up that perhaps, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that vine where the parent slaps the glass and it explodes and you hear, way to go, Paul. Get the wheels on the bus! Okay, so uh, a, pretty good one, a parent that maybe thinks that their kid's playing in the show, but they're actually only playing peewees. Yeah, it's actually, I think, right around my peewee year. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it short, but for a setting, we're in Chicago for a showcase playing against 
the honey baked hams out of Detroit. And we had this guy on this team whose dad was just an absolute nut job. And his kid ended up getting thrown out of the game for some ridiculous, it was clearly a penalty, but yeah, he got tossed and his dad was not having it. So with his walk from getting ejected from the game, he was up in the stands. There was about four garbage cans in his path. So you know all of those made it onto the ice. I'm pretty sure I was at this game. You probably were. But the worst part was one of the moms was sitting up in the stands, minding her own business, wearing a nice white shirt. And oh, boy. the father had a nice full cup of coffee, and he was cocked back, ready to throw it. And what do you think happened? The lid falls off right on her shirt. And so he had to do a little bit of explaining, and I ended up thinking he bought her a new shirt. But – He's one of those dads that are many, and uh, I would strive my hardest not to be like him. Anything top that that you guys have been through? That's pretty good. Uh, no, I can't top that. Grant's pretty good with those kind of things. I, don't know, I, got, a lot of, I got a lot of stories about dads and you know road trips, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how PG we're trying to keep <laughs> family uh, friendly podcast. Yeah, I don't know here. how PG we're trying to keep coast to coast, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't think I have a story like that. I have more of a uh, funny stories, you know, that the dad used to do, um, and how basically how we were left uh, by ourselves at hotels a lot. Let's, let's just put it like that. <laughs> so let's round this out here with some serious talk about the games tonight and the games tomorrow. Jamestown Jimmy's number fifteen team in the nation. I wrote an article in the Champagne Room this morning that came out saying that you guys have not been ranked in the top ten once in the past three seasons uh nine out of ten weeks that you have been in the top ten six straight weeks at number nine what can you guys do to build off of that and progress up the ladder of the acha honestly we don't really know how these rankings work uh, it's a computer yeah Nothing obviously, matters. obviously the computer but i think their algorithm's pretty much off i think i can create a better one but uh other than that, I mean, all we got to do is we got to play our game. We got to keep it simple. We got to keep doing the little things. Uh, our lineup is you know, pretty much back to where it needs to be. Uh, almost everyone's pretty much healthy. Uh, and we just got to play our game. We got to we gotta bring it every night. Sometimes we don't. Some We'll bring it on a Friday. We won't play as good on a Saturday. But we just got to play the same way, same style, every single day, every single game. Um, we should have no no problem with you know not giving up a lot of goals with our goalie uh, and our defense, and we should have no problem scoring goals with the amount of offensive talent we have. Uh, I I don't think I think if we play our game, especially here at home on the big pond in front of uh, alumni, it is alumni weekend. Um, we should have no problem. Yeah, just going off what Cap said. <clears throat> uh, obviously, the the way to keep climbing up the rankings is winning games. Um, and we know we have some tough uh, opponents coming up here, so I think um, if we can win the games we need to win, um, we're going to continue to climb up those rankings like we've seen already. Uh, but, yeah, it just comes down to winning games, and that's pretty much how these rankings work. If, if you lose or you split, like usually you don't see much of a change or if sometimes you see a huge change if the algorithm's all whatever it is. But, yeah, I think just continue to win games and beat the teams we need to beat. Do you think this has been the most exciting time you've had, knowing that there's a lot of potential, probably the most loaded offensive lineup you guys have boasted throughout our four years here, but a chance to go through to the national championship, having won one since your head coach, Nick Ravini, <laughs> loves to brag about uh, in yeah. 2008, but certainly a lot of promise on the horizon moving forward. Yeah, I think uh, it's definitely very reassuring to know that our last year is with a team that um, – is arguably probably one of the best teams we've been on in our four years, um, right up there with our freshman year team. Um, so I think, I mean, it's obviously exciting. One more year of hockey. Uh, this is about as close as we've got to um, a national championship team I think we've had in our four years here. But um, just excited to finish it off with a really good group of guys. And um, our senior class has been probably, I, I would say, probably one of the most uh, consistent classes through the four years playing a lot of these other classes have had guys quit or other things like that guys graduating early so that bond wasn't always there um, whereas our, our our group is like definitely a group of guys that is going to be friends for like Fabo and his buddies they all won games they won championships so um, I think this is a group that we'll see guys living together in the city soon you'll see guys um, going out together we'll definitely be in touch so it's definitely a special group here and um, we've seen already how much we've meshed as a group, even with the younger guys. Um, it's so 
it's definitely definitely exciting thing for us. Stu, last question. How close do you think this locker room has gotten? I mean, he just alluded to it that you guys have meshed very well together, including the tag team of Shanksy and Evesy. Mm-hmm. Trademark. Yep. Trademark. Um, so Remember is, that. Is there a different feel, different uh, sort of emotion in the locker room, knowing that you have a chance to win every game and there's not a lot of doubt? Yeah, there definitely is. We feel the buzz every day at practice. You know, guys are always trying their hardest, and we haven't really seen that in years past. But uh, it's a lot of fun. The energy is always great, and there's nothing I would rather have than sailing off into the sunset to Disney World, being a national champion as my last season. And uh, are I you think going to Disney World. I'm going to Disney World. I'm not after, going to Disney World. After, Too much walking after down Miami. There. But um, yeah, so the locker room is great. And everyone loves to get along, and there's always a couple jokesters. I might be included into that. Locker room captain. Locker room captain. But, um, yeah, everything's going great. And uh, it's one of those years where every day at the rink is an exciting day, and you look forward to getting there all the time. It's a nice little way to get the uh, real-world scaries gone for a couple hours. And, uh, yeah, I just I can't wait to keep going, and it's an exciting time of the year. And bouncing off of uh, what Grant said with the buzz around the locker room when we're at, at the rink, um, the one thing I've noticed this year with this group compared to other groups, um, minus maybe our freshman year, like I said, um, is is the intensity in practice. The intensity in practice is so much higher, and um, it's to the point where guys are getting pissed off at each other in practice, and guys are slashing each other after like a play they didn't like or Neil. stuff like that. So, um, so it's definitely that's like that. That was the environment when we played juniors, when everyone was there to get a scholarship or to stay on the team. Like you were seeing fights in practice, and you were seeing that intensity every day. Battle day on Tuesday was like the worst because you knew that those guys that are really fighting for that spot are going to be playing like they would play in a game. So, um, just to see that, it really makes it more <clears throat> makes it more fun because um, Favo likes to <clears throat> excuse me, Favo likes to play. I'm good, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, Favo likes to play a lot of games, so to be able to have that intensity in practice really <clears throat> makes those games more enjoyable, more competitive, and guys want to win, so it's good. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, boys. We'll see you next week. A nice little inaugural episode of the Coast to Coast Podcast. I'm Cristiano Simonetta, Joey Caprio, Grant Stuve, Eric Crookshank. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Thanks.